that he will speak to you and minister to you as he does the same to me this new day. And I want to encourage somebody, cheer up in your spirit, cheer up in your heart, trust in the Lord and be of good cheer. Trust in the Lord and be of good cheer because something new, something wonderful is about to happen to us in Jesus' name. Let's pray as we go to the sharing of God's word. Our Father in heaven, we thank you in the name of Jesus for the grace to gather together through this platform, connecting through this media. Lord, we pray that your spirit who is everywhere at all times, empowering us and strengthening us, let him encourage, strengthen. Let him, oh God, cause something to work from within us so that we'll be able to work on the outside. We pray that there will be such a power in us that will, oh God, overflow to the outside. We thank you, we honor you, and we bless you. Use me, Lord, as your vessel, as your man servant, to speak forth your words. Thank you, Father. Bless everyone that we are interacting with this morning and be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want us to go to our sharing this morning and we want to uh, go to the book of First Kings chapter number 19. I'll read some few verses. First Kings chapter number 19. I'll be reading from verse number 1 and we're going to be blessed in the name of Jesus. First Kings chapter number 19. I'll be reading from verse number 1 and my key scripture is verse number 4. The Bible says, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, also how he had executed all the prophets with a sword. How he had executed all the prophets with a sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, a messenger saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. By tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. Left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree and he prayed that he might die and said it is enough now Lord take my life for I am no better than my father's may the Lord bless the reading of the word I also want us to return to our key scripture this week Psalms 147 verse number 3 Psalms 147 verse number three psalms 147 verse number three he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds this is our verse the verse we are looking at because issues of life challenges and pains and troubles they target the human heart and I've just read the story of Elijah. Elijah, the valiant warrior, spiritual warlord. I'm talking about Elijah, the spiritual warlord. A man who stood one man against the leaders, the nation, the national sphere. He had a national platform on which he operated. He operated from a national platform with boldness. Elijah was a bold man. Elijah was a man of God. Generations talk about Elijah. He was a Tishbite, the man who stood in the presence of God. A man who was a courageous man, a fearless man. The man who boldly rebuked sin in the presence of kings. There are very few like Elijah, even in our days. There are very few like this man who can confront wickedness head on. This is Elijah, the servant of God. And in the days of Ahab, whom the Bible says he was one king in whose days there was high level wickedness because he hooked up with a wicked woman by the name Jezebel. And Jezebel was not just a woman. 
from our Bible study, we understand Jezebel is a spirit that fights the prophets, is a spirit that kills the prophet. Jezebel is the same spirit that was in the woman who killed John the Baptist, the very woman Herodias. She was operating in the spirit of Jezebel, the spirit that fights holiness, the spirit that fights the worship of the true God, the spirit whose strength is in Baal and Asherah. There has never been a generation that never had a Baal and Asherah. Even our generation has spirits that think fertility and, and, and other things are stronger than God. You know, and Elijah stood in his days. Elijah stood in his days to say there is only one God, the God of Israel. There is only one God, the God who created the heavens in the earth. He is holy and Israel belongs to God. And because of this, his life was in danger throughout. But it is recorded in the word of God. God ordered his steps. I love what David says that Lord orders the steps of the righteous. It is in Elijah you see God ordering the steps of a man. From that day he stood and said, Today I declare there will never reign in Israel until I speak again because of the wickedness of the land. Three and a half years it never rained in the land until Ahab and everybody in Israel acknowledge that God is Jehovah because there was hunger than any other time it had happened in Israel. And Elijah reappeared again. And after reappearing, he took the 450 Baal prophets and some other 400. And they were there on the mountain. And fire came from heaven. So I'm talking about a warlord, a man of woe, a man who dwelled on the mountain, a man who dwelled in the midst of chariots of fire. This is Elijah. And so after he kills, the 450 bad prophets plus some other 400 through a great slaughter in chapter number 18. He killed them and he made sure that Israelites were now free of this very big number of prophets that were prophesying because of the pay, not from God, because they were on payroll. He stopped their worship by killing them because fire came from heaven after he prayed after rebuilding the altar and praying fire came from heaven without human help and it consumed the sacrifice and God stamped before people that Elijah is a servant of God that Elijah is a representative of God who is a consuming you know fire God is a consuming fire that is what the scripture says God is a consuming fire he came down and consumed the sacrifice and confirmed to the people that Elijah speaks on God's behalf you see Elijah is a man of faith you don't need to hit the stone for water to come out. You can even speak to the stone and water comes out. He spoke a word of prayer and fire came from heaven and consumed the sacrifice. And there was fear. After the fire came, there was fear that gripped the enemies of God. That they were not able to reason anymore or to fight. That fire that came from heaven is the one that made the 450 bad prophets and the rest not to confront Elijah. They were helpless. They were there as he slaughtered one after the other. And I want to tell you something. After this great work of slaughtering men and looking at their blood, caring less about their children, their families, because he wanted to reestablish worship in Israel. This man, after killing them, he was weary. He was exhausted. He had done a physical job, a spiritual job, and he was very weary. And I don't think if there was somebody who was praying behind the bars for Elijah, so that after Elijah has done this work, he can be regenerated. He can be strong again. He can arise again. There were no intercessors who were behind Elijah who could pray that God renew the strength of your servant. Empower him again. Cause him to stand again and overcome the challenges of life. Because after Elijah comes from battle and he has, you know, he has, he has won and the crown of victory is before him. At that very point in time when he is tired, after coming Accomplishing a great slaughter. The man is tired. The man is weary. The king of the day 
instead of celebrating the victory of God, the king of the day, instead of teaming up with Elijah to rebuild Israel as a center of worship, the worship of the true God, he reported the statements about the death to Jezebel, the office of evil, the office of destruction. And after Jezebel hears, after Jezebel hears that her prophets are no more, they are dead, their blood has run down the drain, she comes up with a threat. It is not the reality, it is a threat. And she sends a message to Elijah. Bible says in verse number 2, verse number 2, 1 Kings chapter number 19, verse number 2, then Jezebel, Jezebel, send a messenger, underline that word messenger, to Elijah, saying, so let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Now listen, the word messenger means a carrier, a container that carries substance, and the one who was sent to Elijah was one who carried the poison called fear. One of the biggest diseases of the heart is a disease called fear, and fear does not just emanate from nowhere is a spirit bible says in second timothy chapter number one verse seven we have not received the spirit of fear now jezebel scares the man of god this man who has fought a good battle this man who has killed prophets physically he is weary he is exhausted and then a spirit of fear is wrapped up in a messenger and I'm speaking to somebody today. You met somebody who spoke some words into your life. And those words rendered your heart torn. They tore your heart. You are no longer strong. You've been fighting so valiantly. But one word from a certain man concerning something. It has given you sleepless nights. And your heart is no longer stable. We call that the spirit of fear the spirit of Jezebel, the spirit that scares Jezebel could not have killed Elijah. He has no power to kill Elijah. But one statement from Jezebel, if not treated well, it can tear your heart and impose fear to your spirit. And I, wanna, I see the same happening to the giant of faith. The giant of faith by the name Elijah, after uh, accepting fear, you know, he coded fear, he decoded fear when he received the statement from Jezebel, I will kill you by tomorrow, such a time I will have already killed you. He believed, you know, he accepted what the message was. And I'm here to tell somebody, protect your heart protect your heart from the poisonous message that come from Jezebel. There are so many Jezebels of today who come to scare us. Tomorrow I will have sucked you. Tomorrow your business will have died. They are here to scare and say the disease will kill you. Business will collapse. I call that a messenger of the devil. That is why the Apostle Paul says there was a messenger of hell who was sent against me and there was a thorn in my flesh. They are messengers of, you know, Jezebel that carry poisonous statements to come and inject the poisonous statements into the warriors of today and i'm here to encourage somebody may the lord protect you from the messengers of jezebel who come with scaring information who come to bring your heart down and i see elijah a man of war elijah a courageous man elijah a warlord running away because he is threatened and this morning God has anointed me to come and encourage somebody. Arise in your heart. Be strong in your heart and confront the spirit of Jezebel. Be strong in your heart and tell Jezebel the same way I killed 450 plus prophets, I will confront you. I will strengthen myself. And That is the same spirit that God put in Jehu. Later on, Jehu, the king who was anointed by the same Elijah and received Received a portion from Elijah, he stood strong and confronted Jezebel. And Jezebel ran away from Jehu. Jehu was appointed by Elijah. So, why is Elijah weak? It is because he 
paved way for the spirit of discouragement and decided to run into the unknown. The Bible calls it the wilderness. He comes to Beresheba and he leaves his servant there and a few of the, you know, his servant there. He is not ready even to fellowship with the people closer to him because of fear. And this morning, I'm here to tell somebody, let's confront fear. Fear is a disease of the heart. Fear is a, you know, an equilibrium spirit. It comes to destabilize. It comes to affect your emotions. And this morning, we are strongly confronting fear. And we are telling fear, no. We are telling fear, no. And we are ready to impress what God is about to do. So verse number four, look at what fear does. When fear creeps your heart, you behave like Elijah. And I'm sorry, Elijah is a very strong man. But because of fear, he's misbehaving in his talk. Look at what fear can produce. May the Lord heal the broken in heart. May the Lord give people to be strong again. A strong man like Elijah was killed 400, 800 plus prophets. He is speaking out of fear. The Bible says, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under broom tree and he prayed, look at this prayer, that he might die. The Bible says we will not die. We will live to declare the goodness of the Lord. But a man who is under fear is like, kill me, kill me. I'm ready to die. And you know such like a person, if you bring poison around, he can drink to die. He said, I, he prayed that night that, that he might die. And he said, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life for I am no better than my fathers. This is what we are fighting today. The spirit of fear, the spirit that comes to put up a, a roadblock on your faith so that you cannot see God anymore. You see the devil and begin to say, I would rather die. I would rather join up, you know, Moses. I would rather join up Abraham. I would rather join up Isaac. I'm telling you, you will not go to join up Isaac and Jacob and Abraham in the grave. You will live to declare the goodness of the Lord. But we have to confront the spirit of fear. You have to eat the word of God. That is why verse number Verse number five is so powerful because he talks about God who is our present help in time of need. God is our present help in time of need. Look at what he does in chapter number 19, verse five. He says, then as he lay down and slept under a broom tree, come on, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, arise and eat. I'm here to tell somebody good news while you are still praying that you die. God is very present, very close to you. When you are still saying, I would rather move away from this job, I would rather resign, God is very close to you. Before you resign, spare yourself some one minute and tell God, I release my life to you. And the angel touched him and said, arise and eat. And I'm telling somebody, eat something from God. Eat a scripture from God. Before you give in to wrong confessions and claim death is the best option, eat the word of God. The best way to deal with the fear is faith. The best way to confront fear is through faith. Confront fear with faith. He was told, rise and eat, arise and eat. And I'm telling somebody, arise and eat. This is the word of God. He has given me a word for you. Arise and eat. What does the word say? It's God has a good plan for you. God has a plan to give you a future and a hope. Thou Elijah of today, don't die. Arise and eat. That is the message from the angel. Arise and eat. Don't allow despair to consume you. Don't allow hopelessness to consume you. Hold on to the confession of faith. Trust in the Lord with your whole heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. David says the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And I'm coming here to tell somebody, though you walk through the shadow of the valley of death, you shall fear no evil. For his rod and his staff they comfort you. Let somebody be comforted this morning. Let somebody be encouraged this morning. Let Jezebel not stand before you to scare you until you begin to say death come my way. Reject every death and claim power and claim strength and declare to the sorcerers and declare to the wickedness of the wicked I carry a God who is able to give me victory. I carry a God who is able to strengthen me and give me victory. So today reject every fear 
eat the word of God. Reject every fear and pick on the meal of the spirit. Because God has strength for you. God has strength for me and God is on our side. If God be for us, who shall be against us? The same God who used the hands of Elijah to kill 450 plus prophets. He is able to use the same hand to kill Jezebel. So why should Elijah be lying down and be complaining? Let Elijah arise and eat. And I'm telling the Elijah of today, arise and eat. Arise and consume the word. There is too much word for you to begin confessing fear and despair. There is too much word to give you a conquest, to give you victory, to give you strength. Position yourself well and tell the devil, no matter what happens, I'm not confessing fear. I will tell my heart, cheer up in the Lord. Let me close with this scripture that makes me happy. Let me close with this scripture that makes me happy. Let me close with this scripture that makes me happy. And this is Psalms 42. Psalms 42 verse 9 to 11. Let somebody arise from wherever the devil wants you to be and speak to your own life. Speak to your own heart. Sometimes your heart can easily want to weigh you down. Your heart may be sick because of your environment, but it is time to speak to your heart. The Bible says, I will say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning? Because of the oppression of the enemy. Verse number 10. As with the breaking of my bonds, my enemies reproach me, while they say to me all day long, Where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise Him, the help of my countenance and my God. That is my closing statement. Let us arise and praise God. Forget about what you are going through. Our strength is in praising God. The spirit of faith will help you to praise God no matter what. And that was the victory Paul and Silas had while in prison. There was hopelessness in prison. They had been beaten. They were swollen. And everything suggested they will die. But you know what happened? They started to praise God. They gave in not to any pressure from the devil. Instead, they praised God. They loved God. They continued to trust in God. And the prison doors were rendered open. I'm here to tell somebody, Jezebel wants you dead, but she will die. It is Jezebel who is supposed to die. God will protect you. Tell your heart, arise and praise the Lord. Tell your heart, hope in God. For he shall, for you shall praise the Lord. So this morning, I encourage somebody. It doesn't matter how fierce it may be in your place of work. The challenges, the pains, the spirit of fear is not our portion. May your heart be strong. May your heart be encouraged. May God come your way and give you power and give you strength so that you conquer in this life. Elijah, after requesting for death, God will give you what you want. God gave him food twice he told him eat the second time eat and after eating he went in the strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights to mount horeb where he had a voice of god telling him now that you want to die before you die go and anoint jehu go and anoint uh, elisha after you go and anoint hazael for, for for leadership over over syria you know when you want death god will just give you what you want but i'm saying to somebody don't ask for death. God still wants you to serve in the kingdom. God still wants you to serve in the kingdom. Rejoice and begin to praise God and live for a hundred years praising God. It's not time to die. It is time to arise and praise God and love him. And the only way to arise, praise God and love him is by giving your heart to the Lord and making him to be Lord and Savior of your life. Could there be somebody watching and you are about to give up? You are saying in your heart, Things are very tough. I would rather die. Don't die. Repeat this prayer of salvation and power will come to your heart and you are going to overcome whatever challenge is before you. There also could be somebody who is threatened by a sickness. They call it a killer disease. That is a Jezebel spirit. No disease is stronger than God. There is no challenge stronger than God. We've gone through such and we are winning. So it is important for us to speak faith and trust God for victory. Now I'm here to speak to somebody, you are viewing, I'm seeing several viewers here, you are challenged by issues, it is because God knows what you are going through that he has sent me to speak to you. I'm seeing so many people 
having joined this platform on Facebook, I see Mary Rick, <clears throat> I see Vivian Randa, I see several people, Esmili Juma, I see Jaro, Jason Caro, I see several, Sakaria Kitonga, Mbaka Clifford, I see Adeline Chanya Mjomba. May the Lord touch your life wherever you are and be strengthened in God and be able to overcome what you are going through. Just in a minute, I'll be praying for you, but let's ask those who are yet to give their life to Jesus to surrender to him. Repeat this prayer of salvation. Ask the Lord to have mercy on you. Father, say, Father, I repent my sins, my wicked, my, my confessions of fear. I repent the confessions of fear. I repent any sin that I've done in my life. I ask you to come into my life and I make you Lord and Savior. You died, Jesus, and you resurrected for me. Come and live in my life. Amen. If you pray that prayer, the Lord watches over you. The Lord has received your strength and your prayer of strength and the Lord is going to strengthen you. And I want to pray with every friend of mine that has joined me this morning. Thank God for this way of uh, communication. We join one another. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you because of the viewers, those that we have connected on this platform. Bless them, Lord. Minister to their hearts. If there is somebody like Elijah who has come to the end of the road, who is saying enough, Lord, there will not be enough. We still have to arise and conquer and move. I pray for them that they will not give up. They will not begin to ask God for death. Lord, I pray that you will strengthen somebody from fear. Let every fear die. Let faith be a portion for your people this morning. Those who have been threatened in business, in work, in marriage, anywhere somebody is under the spirit of fear, I bind that spirit of fear and I declare faith. I declare the peace of God. Bless your people and grant us to see your goodness in the land of the living. Thank you for this powerful day that is full of your presence and full of your power. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord do you good. The Lord minister to you. It's going to be well. The Bible says, go and tell the righteous it shall be well with them. It shall be well with you as you confess the word of God. May the Lord bless you. We will be giving to the Lord wherever you are. There is a number on your screen that can help you to serve God with what is given you. And it shall be well with you. It shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Father, bless every giver, everyone that tunes and gives for the kingdom. I pray that your spirit will rest upon them and your power and that you will help us to serve you and to do thy will. Bless this day as we begin it, Lord, we're going to prosper in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'm welcoming you to our services in Jomvu. I have a very short time on this platform, but when you come there, we will interact personally, strengthen one another. It is on your way from Mikindani through the Cabro Road, going down, and as you begin to rise, right where we have the Catholic Church, Pope Francis Church, there is a route on the left, a few meters in the inside, you get to the right, and then you will see JCC coming up with a blue iron sheet. We are right inside. You will be blessed as you fellowship with us. We love you and we will be continuing with you tomorrow as God gives us grace. The Lord bless you. Be strong in the Lord. Bye-bye.